Hey, what's up guys? It's Alex, and today we're actually gonna replace my drivetrain. Uh, it really needs it. I've gone through three chains on this drivetrain, and uh, yeah, it's just becoming super loose, it's really loud, and it's shifting kind of sloppy. So we're gonna do a full replacement. So all we'll need for this drivetrain replacement is a new cassette. So we have the XT 11 to 42 tooth cassette, and we have one up's brand new chain, which I'm really interested to try. It just came out, and they claim it's supposed to last a lot longer than most chains on the market, and that it's almost as light as a SRAM XX1 chain. And then of course, we're gonna use the one up chain ring for XTR, and we're gonna use a 34 tooth. So to start out, we're gonna find out if our chain is worn. So right now, it makes a lot of noise, it's shifting a little sloppy, and the chain just feels worn out. But um, I kinda know it's worn out because it's been three chains, but the way to check, you get yourself a chain checker, and it's got steps one, two, and three. You can buy a chain checker from uh, Pedro's, Park Tool, or some of the others on the market. And then, basically you put one in first, two, and then it should not slot on the third one. It should not be able to fall into the pins, which this one does, so the chain is definitely worn. Um, I've been through several chains on this bike already, so I know that the whole drivetrain is worn, so it's ready for replacement. So to start this install, we're gonna find the quick link on the old chain. And they're pretty easy to find. They look like this. So now we're gonna use our quick link tool and we're gonna take the quick link off. And make sure it doesn't snap back too hard. And we're gonna remove the chain. And set it aside. So at this time, we can now remove the rear wheel. And the last thing to remove is actually the chain ring. So with the one-up chain guide, it's really easy. You just lift it up that quick, and then you use your five mil. Just loosen each bolt. And then with the one-up ring, it should just slide right off over the crank itself. And you don't even have to take your pedals off for this one. Possibly if you had a smaller ring than a 32 or 34, you might need to take the cranks off. So the one-up chain ring is one of the only chain rings on the market that I feel has the same chain retention as like a SRAM X-Sync. Um, SRAM X-Sync only licenses like Cro-Mag and SRAM, so those are your only two options. But if you're running a Shimano chain or Shimano crank, you want some different options. I think the one up is really good. Um, I haven't had good luck with a race face in the past, but with the one up tooth, I've never really dropped a chain. I know I have this super minimalist chain guide, but even with the race face chain rings, I was dropping chains. So I really like this and it's proven to be fairly durable. So uh, it's a really good one and it installs really easily. So now for the install of the chain ring, um, just so you know, there's this little bump you can barely see right here. And that's actually gonna go behind the crank arm. So just so you know, that's the orientation of the chain ring. So you're gonna slide it over with this, the numbers and the little bump over the back side of the crank arm. Finagle it around and pop it into place. Now all we have to do is install the four bolts and we'll install them very lightly at first. What's nice about the one-up chain ring is that these bolts actually just screw directly in to the one-up ring. There's no little, uh, there's no separate threads you have to install on the back side of the ring. They just screw right into the ring. So now you have all of them slightly loose. And if you noticed when I was tightening them, I tried to tighten them in a star pattern or cross each one to get even tension. So now we're gonna go for a little bit more Still in a star pattern. And then for the final tightening, um, I don't use a torque wrench. You can use a torque wrench, but uh, just get them really snug.
and that should be good to go. And we can actually drop the chain guide at this time. So the vice whip's super easy. And then you get your cassette tool, slide it in there, and break it free. So now that the lock ring is off, that off, and it should all slide off in one piece if your shit is not stuck to the cassette. And normally, it should just slide right off all the pieces, but um, sometimes the cassette can be grooved into the free hub body, and I think that's what happened with mine, so it's gonna take a little bit to pry each and every one of these off. So sometimes, uh, I guess it happens if you put too much power down sometimes, or just, I don't know, if you're very harsh on your free hub bodies, these things can kind of get uh, pried into the free hub body, unfortunately. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get off. Um, sometimes I do prefer the SRAM cassettes because they are one piece and they come off a lot easier. And they don't have this problem where they kind of get forced on to the free hub body. The last couple should come off easy. And it looks like we got some cleaning to do. But if you can tell, the free hub body has got a little tune up. Um, might be able to sand those out a little bit, but uh, that's why some companies make reinforced free hub bodies. So you don't really pry into the metal. So we're just gonna use a tiny bit of Philwood grease on the free hub body itself and just a little dab and we're gonna spread it all over and just get a little light coating all over the free hub body. And now it's time to install the cassette. And it has this specific pattern. It has some narrower grooves and it has some thicker grooves. And it's really easy to line it up with this thicker groove right here because it's the biggest one. So we're gonna find that spot on the cassette, and then slide it on. And you wanna make sure you get all these cogs in order, obviously, so you're shifting down the cassette a little more smoothly. And then when you're putting these smaller rings on, and when you see the engravings on this side, like the 19 tooth right here, that's how you know this is going outside of the bike. So that's just something to look at when you're installing it on the bike. And most of the individual gears will require this little spacer in between. And once you have the cassette fully installed, they say to tighten it down to 40 newton meters. You should be all good to go on the cassette. When you're taking your chain out of the package, don't forget to look at the bottom for your quick link. Sometimes these can get lost in packaging and at the bottom of the box. So at this time, we're gonna figure out how long the chain has to be. So for me, when I'm replacing chains, I just use the old chain and I honestly just line it up link for link with the new chain. And then once I get to the end of the old chain, I just cut the new chain right here. Um, but I'll show you a few other methods on how to determine chain length. So we're gonna use our chain breaker just to break through the pin. To cut the chain. Now the chain should be the correct length for the bike. So we're gonna thread the chain through, making sure to place it on the narrow wide part of the chain. This chain's cool, it's got a nice black finish. And then one way I've been taught on how to get chain length 
is actually to install it on your bicycle, feed it through. You want the chain to go under this little tab on the derailleur. Sometimes people get it over and it just grinds. So I know a lot of people do it in the hardest gear and they just try and make sure that the chain has a little bit of slack. So a lot of people, they'll install it, then just putting a little bit of tension on the rear derailleur so it has some movement. And then that's how you determine your chain length. But my problem with that is you never know if it's gonna clear the biggest cog. So when I first put on a chain, if I don't know how long the chain is supposed to be, and I personally like to figure out what's the shortest chain length I can go. So that's how I would typically do it if I didn't know the size already. But since I know the size already, I cut it the original way I showed you. So now that I've cut the chain to the determined length, I'm just gonna install the master link, each pin on one side of the chain. And then to put it together, never had to explain it. You just push it in, pull it out so it's all together. And then the way to lock the quick link into gear is you rotate it to the top, you hold the brake down on the front, and you just give some pressure, and it should lock into place. You should feel it give. So now the chain is installed. It has a lot of tension in the smallest gear in the back, and then it's not too short in the rear, and it should be good to go. This is my first time ever running the one-up chain, and I can't wait to see how it rides and how long it will last. I'm really excited to have these one-up parts on my bike. And yeah, I'll give you my feedback in a few months down the road. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and it was helpful. I look forward to seeing you all out on the trails. Cheers. Hey, no, no, no.